Hangar 24 started about 2008. It actually was a literal hangar across the street, Hangar 24. Ben Cook, he is a private pilot. He liked to go out, fly, and when he was done, he would come back and drink a couple of craft beers that he made himself. Him and his buddies would tell him all the time, like, hey man, you're really good at this. This orange wheat thing you got going on, that in particular is just excellent. We really think you could do well. Well, uh, Ben Cook and his wife at the time listened to the advice and decided, hey, well, let's start a brewery across the street. And they bought this old airplane hangar and they ended up putting in a brewery. So the equipment that they actually started with is actually up there. That's the first brew house for Hangar 24, the Monte Carlo Casino Brew Pub. Um, that is these two copper tanks you see and any other copper jacketed tanks you see around here are also all came from the Monte Carlo Casino. Um, that was installed in 2008 and got, got to brew an orange wheat pretty quickly. So outside we have the silo which you guys normally hang around. Um, so all of our two row which is our base malt for all of our beers that we brew here at Hangar 24. They all get augered out of that silo up into uh, this counter uh, system. It's actually a weight system and it weighs out 19.2 pounds and then it'll dump it into the mill. The mill will then grind it and send it up here to our holding uh, grist case. So after all the uh, grain is milled through there, that's when we'll actually send all that grain into the mash tun while blending uh, hot and cold water at our desired temperature to hit our uh, desired mass uh, temp. And so we send also uh, specialty bags, so we'll cut up bags and actually dump those in by hand. Um, so all of our specialty malt, that's what gives it the color, the flavor that we're trying to achieve um, for each beer style. Like Mike was saying, so we're adding the grain in the hot water here um, at a desired temperature. So that desired temperature is a ideal temperature for enzyme activation. So the enzymes are breaking down starches into the desired sugar and protein. We're uh, separating the protein out and, and extracting the sugar. So our sugar water, what we call wort, comes over to the kettle and we're gonna do a couple things in the kettle. We're gonna sanitize and we're gonna add bitterness and hop aroma and flavor. Sanitization, so anything above 185 and boiling, um, anything between there is gonna sanitize our liquid for longer than 10 minutes. After we're done boiling our hops, or boiling our wort, we're gonna send it outside to the Whirlpool. Uh, Whirlpool, we send it in tangentially, kind of like a toilet. Proteins flocculate together and fall out of solution and let us extract the clean sugar water wort from the side. We're gonna send that wort inside through a heat exchanger. That's gonna take and knock down the wort's temperature from near boiling around 212 degrees to our desired fermentation temperature varying anywhere from about 70 degrees to like 90 degrees. Um, we'll send those inside to these fermentation tanks. Any of these tanks you see with these large conical bottoms are what we call a fermentation vessel. Um, it's, it's designed that way so, to make a natural convection current to homogenize the liquid during fermentation. Um, yeast is added during knockout. Yeah, right through here. Right through here. So we'll, as the, the hose um, is sending the wort in, we'll just have a brink here and we'll open it up and the yeast will blast in and it'll mix and go right into the tank all at the same time. So we don't have to open up a tank and dump it in or anything like that. Um, so it makes it very easy for our process. And, and yeast is actually kind of the workhorse here. It's, it's the busy bees. Um, it is converting sugar into what we want, alcohol and CO2, about a 50-50% split on that. Um, and then it takes anywhere from five days to a month to ferment uh, all the sugar out and become what we would call green beer. Depending on what beer style we're brewing or trying to uh, create here. So like our lagers will take like a month. As for orange wheat, we can have it ready in seven days. Which is so fast. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is cellar two. Uh, we have two fermentation vessels and one bright tank in this cellar. Um, Joe is currently kegging some of our orange wheat off of uh, bright tank one. Uh, we have a total of six bright tanks and uh, 15 fermenters. Uh, the fermenters go from anywhere from 25 to 50 to 75 up to, these are 165s or 175s. 
175s, and then they get up into 210s in the back. Yeah, as Mike was saying, these uh, bright tanks, the only really big difference with them than a fermentation tank is these big flat bottoms. So you can kind of think of this as just a huge, huge keg. If you were to drink two pints of beer off of this every day for the rest of your life, you would never drink all the beer that is in there. And this is our bottling line right here. So uh, essentially right now, only two beers get ran through this machine. Uh, it's gonna be Orange Wheat and Betty um, that go into our six packs and 12 packs. This will pump out uh, 3,000 bottles an hour is how fast we can uh, run this machine. Um, and we're doing anywhere from uh, two to four pallets a day when we actually do run it. So it gets, uh, it's working when we do run it. Um, fun fact about this machine, uh, we've produced over like 20 million bottles, I think. We are times, we produce times 10 more uh, bottles than anybody's ever produced on this same exact machine. So the people in Italy, they know us. They're like, oh, Hangar 24, the company that's produced 20 times anybody on our machine. So we were here. So you guys have seen it. first day that it got installed. This ramp. Oh, that's incredible, dude. First day. That's incredible. Um, so yeah, this is Cellar 3. This was added in 2012. Um, when I started, it was actually just empty filled and these three tanks in the back, this one bright tank and two ferment tanks, were just sitting out here in the middle of the sky. Some really cool additions came with Cellar 3. These three offices were a huge change. We used to stack everybody in the little office over there. Now Tasting Room got their own office, we got our own lab, and then we were able to have a manager's uh, cool office over there. Yeah, that's Mike's office now. <laughs> like I said, cool office. Um, so yeah, these are the, that's the fermentation and bright tanks. The other two, our other three pieces of equipment that are really exciting in here are kind of right here against this wall. So it's the centrifuge, a canning line, inline carbonator. I'm gonna tell you about all three. Centrifuge is really exciting. So that's a way that we're able to do filtration. Um, with, with, without a centrifuge, with, with, we would be, Filtration would take significantly longer, so. It'd be, it would take us probably like a day or two to get. Literally 24 hours, if not more, where we're doing, we're able to do uh, the same batch in maybe two hours. So this has increased our just production, just, just production time alone significantly, but it also has increased our quality. So to filter, um, other ways of filtration would add other points of oxidation. So having this, it limits, it limits our oxidation significantly. Oxygen is the enemy of beer, so that's a huge, huge win for us. Um, after we installed that, we also installed the inline carbonator, which also is just one of the coolest pieces of equipment we have. Um, without that, we would be carbonating, forced carbonating inside of a tank, which actually strips a lot of the aroma. It's, it ends up just not being a very good method. Um, forced carbonation, our inline force carbonation, um, as the volume passes it, it carbonates that volume to the exact desired carbonation um, spec as it passes. So it's also significantly faster, just saving us time. It keeps the aroma in the beer. So beers like Orange Wheat and Betty, very aroma um, dependent beers. And so those having that will add 30% aroma to every beer we have. So it's an absolutely incredible addition. This is our new canning line, yeah. Um, I've gotten really familiar with it since we've unloaded it. This line is way better than our old one. Uh, this one will run about 40 cans per minute, as to our old line only did 20 cans a minute. So it, our efficiency's gone way up. Um, not only that, but we have more control over everything because now it's a touch screen. It's basically a little computer where I can tell this whole machine exactly what I want it to do. The old one, it was a lot more different. Um, it did do some options, but it wasn't as uh, advanced as this. I can change things on the fly and I can change each one. As for last time when I was trying to make an adjustment, it would change all of them. Now I can pick and choose which filler I need to adjust. Like if it's too low, if it's too high, I can do all of that with just going to a screen and just filling out the beer, knowing and watching my temperature. Uh, so temperature is a big part and pressure from our tank. Those two, if they're balanced correctly, this machine will run flawless. And uh, now we have a rotary pack off table. So this will actually hold about 10 cases of beer on it um, before I would have to essentially stop the machine so that they can clear it off. 
Um, the other machine would back up within three, four cases, something like that. So lots of big upgrades on this new line. Um, I love it. it, it runs very nice. You guys earned three beers, man. Right? So. I think you guys earned it. <laughs> <laughs>